Hey guys, it's Avery here, and today we're taking a look at another one of my old sketchbooks. I used this sketchbook for one month, June 2015, and if you watched my last video and you're wondering why I'm going back in time, it's because somehow I missed this one. This was originally a sketchbook that my partner Aiden was using for a drawing class and that I then later took to fill the rest of the way. And here is my first drawing in this sketchbook. At the time, Aiden was reading Dune out loud to me, and I don't remember the exact context of this scene, but Paul Atreides was at some sort of political dinner, I think, and he made some sort of, he like ate food off another guy's plate to make a point that like the way of animals, savage natural order. Anyway, at the time I thought it was really funny, so I sort of made an attempt to draw a two-panel comic about it. Here are some ideas for a comic that I kind of wanted to do. If you saw in my previous videos, the grindcore goat and the punk parrot, these were ideas for those characters. There's a furry that I was not happy with. Um, here is sort of a... Oh, I can see this is when I was deciding on the full version of my name because there are some, there's an alternate spelling of Davenport that I was considering. I'm glad I ultimately decided to uh, go with uh, Davenport with an E rather than Davenport with a Y. And then here is a zine I did for, at the time, my favorite band, Ghost Mice. I don't really want to discuss it, you can Google it if you want, but for certain reasons they are no longer a band I really feel comfortable listening to or supporting. But at the time, I didn't really know any of that, none of that had come to light yet, and they were my favorite band. This was a zine I was doing for a their song, I believe, Oh Me. So. You can see the start of the lyrics there. Oh, there's another one of Aiden's drawings. Yeah, and then I guess I redrew it smaller so that I would eventually be able to fit it on the zine. So, there is the angel with the sword. These were done with micron pens, I think. I was really proud of these. It was like, this zine was like head and shoulders above anything I'd done at the time. The devil in the broken heart. Mother, and I didn't quite get them sized right, so when I eventually scanned and sized them to the zine, um, they were a little wonky, but I was still, again, very, very proud of how it turned out. There are some concepts for what eventually became the O Mother line. And there is O Father and O Lover. Again, I was really, really proud of how this one came out. I thought it was, I thought it turned out really good. In fact, I still, I still think that this is incredible work. And then there's the end of it. Oh me and oh ghost. Before I finished any sort of comics, this was one of the first big projects I'd set for myself and finished. Like at the time, a series of, I believe that was eight, or no, maybe it was seven plus the opening page. Yep, there's the opening page. Yeah, at the time, Eight Micron illustrations was a huge project for me. I would, I would contend that eight illustrations in a sequence is still a pretty big project at my current skill level. Um, but I finished it and I was super proud with it. Um, I ended up printing it out and when I saw Ghost Mice at a show, I gave all the members that were there copies of it. Yeah, here was me trying to figure out a system of magic and time travel for a project I was working on at the time, sort of a comic I wanted to write that never got written. Uh, around this time, there was like this thing going around on Tumblr, this like drawing meme that was draw Grunkle Stan in the outfit you're wearing right now. So I drew Grunkle Stan in the outfit I was wearing that day. Got like fingerless gloves, striped knee socks, cargo shorts, a sleeveless Blackbird Rom shirt. Good outfit. Here I had started watching Invader Zim for the first time, so I was trying to experiment with how to draw Zim. 
is another Zin, and there is a one-panel comic based on that, uh, on that Tumblr post. You know the one. Another Zim with all his little, like, dock off legs out. Um, what's it called? It's called a pack. And a little Tavros in the corner. No, oh, and another Tavros. Love Tavros. There is Zim dressed in one of Aiden's outfits. And Zim dressed in some of my outfits. Should really try getting back into drawing these, like, outfits plus a pose. That was, I think, good practice. There's a two-panel Invader Zim comic based on another Tumblr post. Again, you probably know the one that it's based off of. Um, also, based on that Tumblr post, this was at the time intended to be sort of like a Zim did ship kind of comic. I did not know when I watched it that, uh, that Zim was full-grown Urkin. I thought it was kind of like a Pokemon trainer deal where they get, like, launched out when they're 10 years old, so, um, yeah, not, uh, something I would ship anymore. And then here are some very early concepts for my story, Coda. Um, there is Philomena and Dom, who still exist in Coda. There's M and Nia, who got moved to a different story, The Adventures of Deadbeat Dick and Bonghead. And there is DJ, who I think I mentioned in a previous video got sort of split in two, and one half stayed in Coda and became Cyrus, and one half got moved to the story you have been made new and evolved into Jude. So, some early original characters. These three look pretty different nowadays, but M and Mia still look pretty similar. And there is trying... I really wanted Nia to be more heavy set. I really don't think I achieved that here, but I was certainly making an effort to move from the one size doll-like poses and forms that I knew how to draw into drawing more diverse body types. So this was my first attempt at drawing that and sort of, you can see me trying to draw more of a tummy, trying to draw more thighs, trying to draw a little more arm fat. And it's obvious I'm no quite have the proportions yet, but gotta start somewhere. Again, there was me trying to work on body diversity. Got the different characters. Looks like it was M, Dom, Mia, and Philomena there. Oh, and there is a pearl. It's not my outfit. That was just an outfit. Some Stevens. I was a big fan of gender non-conforming Stevens, so some fun summer Stevens. There is Komaeda from Dongon Rumpa 2. I believe I drew that in a moving car and concluded afterwards that drawing a good Komaeda to like draw his hair really well worked best if you were in a moving car. <laughs> There's another Steven. In a little skirt and cute sweater that time. That one's really adorable. I feel like drawing Steven, this was before I really knew Moomin, but I feel like drawing Steven is fun the same way drawing Moomin is fun. They're just built out of really soft shapes, lots of soft tubes and soft beams. There is working again on Mia's body shape here, trying to sort of draw a sketch once with a light colored marker and then again with a darker colored marker as sort of an effort to sort of learn how to gesturally draw without erasing. And a corresponding body study for M. More body studies. I don't know if I was looking at references or not for any of these. There's obviously Nia M, and then I think I was trying to find other ways to draw bodies diversely. And again, see, like, it's not something I would say I was necessarily succeeding at, but it was certainly something I was putting a lot of effort into trying. So again, you've got trying to distinguish each character, giving each character a different body type. You've got Nia M. Not sure who that one was. I think that's Philomena, and I don't know that one. I don't know. 
lost to time. I felt like it was same face syndrome except same body syndrome, so I was trying to break out of that. Yeah, you can see here too, trying to sort of draw a face very different from what I would usually draw. Um, I was very satisfied with how this Nia looked. And even now, I think that was sort of, I think this is probably the best one. Like, I can see now that I feel like her lower half and her bottom, yeah, top half are a bit still disproportionate, but yeah, see a little bio of Nia. There are some pearls, pearl from the back and pearl with her hair slicked back. Um, blank page. I wonder what that is. Coffee stain? Blank. Looks like a teeny tiny comic thumbnail from me. Uh, that looks like, if you remember the, uh, the com unfinished comic page with, again, the grindcore goat and the punk parrot. That was the thumbnail for that. And that is the end. A little doodle of metallic sharpie. So, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, sorry that I was sort of short and jumping back in the timeline, but now I know I've definitely not missed any, so the next one is going to be when I start doing my first Corvid comics. So make sure to tune back in next time to catch that. And until then, I will see you later. Bye. Aiden. Aiden. I suppose maybe they were doing blind contours. Aiden. 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 More of Aiden. Aiden. Still Aiden, I believe. Aiden. Upside down notes from Aiden. Maybe I'll cut all this Aiden stuff out. Uh, that's... Definitely Aiden, that is classic Aiden. Again, I'll probably need to ask their permission to show these. More Aiden. I wonder what that was drawn. I'm not sure that community college Aiden drew that. That might be. That seems more like college age Aiden.